Fixing the Money Thing presents No Deposit, No Return. If you are sold out to God and you love the kingdom, you love God and you're generous, God works through you. It's not just the formula of giving that works. It's the complete dependence on God. She threw herself on God. It was her last meal. She had to throw her entire existence on God. God is her source. God is your source. I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I wanna help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the Money Thing. Welcome to another edition of Fixing the Money Thing. I'm Gary Cassie. And I'm Dranda Cassie. And today, Gary's going to be sharing with you principles that will help you find favor in your finances. And that's a good thing because we lived nine years hand to mouth, in debt, no hope, until we found the Word of God addresses finances with all kinds of great promises that changed our life. You know, let me share a mystery with you today out of Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. Think about what you just heard. One person gives freely, yet gains even more. That's a mystery, but that's how God's kingdom operates. You can tap into that principle, Drinda. Yes. You know, it's kind of like these Coke bottles. Back in history, my brother and I, we didn't have jobs back in elementary school, so... <laughs> We would run around and gather pop, well, I call them pop bottles, Coke bottles, depends what part of the country you're from. But uh, we would gather pop bottles, and you could turn those back into the store and get two or three cents a bottle. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, nowadays, it's not what happens. Nowadays, they say no deposit, no return. The principle of making a deposit and getting a return is the principle we just read in Proverbs. One man gives freely, yet gains even more. Recently, we shared this principle with Faith Life Church. I want to invite you to join us during a session as we taught this principle, no deposit, no return. So we are starting a brand new series today called No Deposit, No Return, and we're going to dig into some principles that are going to help you. Okay. Proverbs chapter 11, 24, 25, one person gives freely yet gains even more, yet another withholds unduly but comes to poverty. Underline this, a generous person might prosper. Now, this is the word of God, right? This is what God says. Just say yes. God says a generous person will prosper. This is a key. They will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 9 says, The generous will themselves be blessed, for they share their food with the poor. Fantastic. There's a major key to your life. But I have a question. Why does generosity cause us to prosper? We're going to dig into that today. Why does that cause us to prosper? The key is God is in the people business. The Bible says he reigns on the just and the unjust. The goodness of God brings us to repentance. God is trying to bless us, help us. In fact, generosity is an expression of his very character. Amen? His very character. He is generous. He is generous. And so when we're generous touching people, we're touching people. And so God's in the people business. And as we represent him and we're generous, he's going to prosper us so we can be generous again. That's in a basic kind of overview how that works. But we're going to kind of go to the word of God, Acts chapter 10. Dig into this principle, some vital information you'll need. Acts chapter 10, the story of Cornelius. You say, I've never heard of Cornelius. Well, now you have, and you're going to find out about him right now. Acts 10, verse number 1 says, At Caesarea there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion in what was known as the Italian regiment. Now, this is a key. He was not part of the Jewish nation. All right, we'll come back to that in a minute. Just understand he's not part of the Jewish nation. He and all of his family were devout and God-fearing. He honored God, and he gave, help me out, generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Now, the reason we said he's not part of the Jewish nation is because the Jews had a very strict religious way of life. They were confined by that law. 
he was not a Jew. He was a Gentile. Thus, he did it because he wanted to. That's a key, a major difference there. So one day, about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius, and he, he stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord, he said. The angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is Peter, one of Jesus' disciples. He's staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier uh, who was one of his attendants and told him everything and sent them to Joppa to get, to get Peter. What was happening? Peter is a Jew. God is now going to reveal to Peter and the disciples in Jerusalem that the plan of salvation is now open to the Gentiles, to all of mankind. He chooses a Gentile. He chooses a person to be the cornerstone of this revelation in the world of the Gentiles, and his name is Cornelius. Let me ask you, why did God pick him? Was there a reason? I have a series in the bookstore called God Has Favorites. I do. Because there's reasons why God picks people. We found out why God picked him, didn't we? He was generous. He had a heart towards God. And his generosity and his heart for God came up before God as a memorial. Memorial means a remembrance. Another version of the Bible says this, God has heard your prayers and he has seen your kindness to the poor. God has taken notice of you. The Message Bible says your prayers and giving have brought you to God's attention. Did you realize that you can catch God's attention with your money? What you do with your life, according to the scripture, what you do for people, giving to people, do for people, catches God's attention. Why? Because he's in the people business. And things are going to begin to happen for your life. Because he wants you to have that expression. He wants to touch people, and he's going to help you prosper. The generous person will prosper. Get that. The generous person will prosper. I told last service uh, the story of Rich and Christy Haddix. They, they're on staff. He's on staff here with, with us. I met him five years ago. They weren't on staff in a business setting and began to talk about the kingdom of God, caught his attention about how the kingdom operates and caught his attention. He began to kind of come to church and he slipped in. You know, you, you get around the kingdom and it gets exciting. So he kind of slipped in and he began to apply the principles that he was learning and he was so impressed. The stories they have are so amazing that he, he came on staff. But we were doing some TV taping this week on uh, some hunting stories. Rich is a big hunter, and he applied some of these principles in his hunting life and found them to work. We are doing some TV stories about what he had experienced, and he began to tell me how his life was changed. I want to relay that to you today. He said, last year, this is a six-month period. The story I'm about to tell you is over six months. Last year, we had, and we still have, small groups that are our uh, celebrate freedom small groups. They're a financial small group that deals with getting out of debt, becoming free financially. And he was in one of those. And as he learned more about finances, and was, he was inspired to get out of debt. So he and his wife, Christy, said, okay, what can we do to jumpstart this? They realized they had a truck that they didn't really need. It had about $18,000 equity in it, and they decided to sell it to kind of pay debt with. So they sold it, they had the check in their hand, they were so excited, and then they remembered something. They had heard me talking about Celebrate Freedom. We initiated this, I don't know, four, four years ago, I guess, that uh, we would take extra money above what it, we bring in normally to run the ministry, and we'd send it out, meaning we would take extra money to fund TV, you know, other nations, other churches, anything outside of these four walls, and when we started that process, God said to me, hey, tell my people to not be lackadaisical with their debt. He said, many of my people have just become accustomed to living in debt, having mortgage payments, car payments as a way of life. He says, tell them, tell them to believe me for the money to get the house paid for, the land paid for. And so they remembered that, and they said, you know, this $18,000 was a lot of money. That was a lot of money to them, they said. But they knew it wasn't enough money to get them out of debt. And they felt this stirring on the inside. Ah, you know, 
we might be better just to believe, to sow this money. And after three days of praying about it, they decided to sow this money. And they said, that was hard, you know, that was the biggest check we've had. And we had debt and we wanted to get rid of debt, but we knew that we couldn't do it ourselves and we were gonna trust God to help us. And they sowed that. That's amazing, isn't it? They sowed that check. Well, the generous person will prosper. That means God's gonna help them, right? They believe that. So what happened was they were gonna move from their house. They were gonna sell their house they had. And they called the real estate agent and in the area they lived, the agent said, ah, 180, 190. They said, well, we're gonna believe God for more than that. He says, there's no way. He said, you will not get more than 190 for this house in this location. It just, it's not gonna happen. It's not been happening. You're not gonna get it. Well, they listed it for more than that and they sold their house for 208,000. Now, if you're a good mathematician, if they would have gone with his advice at 190, they sold it for 208, what's the difference? 18,000, how much did they give? 18,000, how much did it cost them to follow God with that? Nothing, he made it up to them right away. But that's not how God works completely. He's not finished, right? Because that just, he gives seed to the sower and he increases your seed according to 2 Corinthians chapter nine. So they thought, you know what? We just painted this house. We did some things to it, made a profit with it. We could probably do that again. So they bought a spec house to flip. And in that six month period of time, they brought $40,000 in their family as extra income. They liked that. Now they had to have a new house. They found a HUD house up for auction and there is over $300,000 appraised value. And they're, well, how much should we bid on it? You know, what should you bid on this house? God gave him a dream in the night told him that someone, the highest bid was $181,101 was the highest bid on that house. So his wife says, okay, let's offer $181,245 or $247. And Rich said, Christy, what's, what's the 247? She says, well, our faith is active 24 seven. Just make it 247. <laughs> and they got the house and they got the house. I mean, how hard is it to win a bid if God tells you what to do, right? I mean, you know, come on. I mean, if God, I mean, come on, that's how God works. God tells, he, he, he speaks to us, he talks to us, right? And so this is in six months, the money they sold their house, their original house paid their debt off. So they paid their debt off and they had 40,000 come in. They now have 130 some, 140, whatever equity in this new house that, how much did it cost them? Nothing. Catch this, folks. The generous person shall prosper. I think it's really cool how God speaks to people and tells them, gives them ideas what to do, right? 